Hey crew, we're getting ready to go on a trip. We're going to do seven more of the walks on the Northwest Walks list. It is 6.14 p.m. We are essentially in Vancouver, Washington. We are being super careful the way we drive because we don't want to blow up our transmission. Um, and we crossed over at the Dalles onto the Washington side and it was dark and rainy and foggy in places and pretty slow going. And we're now at a McDonald's where we're going to get dinner and hopefully we'll be at Miller Sylvania State Park um, around 8 o'clock and hopefully we can find a place to camp there. So we are currently outside Ferndale, Washington and as is typical Maybe I should take him out of frame um, for these types of trips for us. Uh, if we had just left from Pendleton and followed the directions to the first hike, it would have been five hours driving over Snoqualmie Pass. But we said, oh, we don't want to go over Snoqualmie Pass. We want to go through the gorge because Snoqualmie Cass Pass is supposed to get in two feet of snow or something. So uh, then we were going to go through the gorge and go up to Miller Sylvania State Park and spend the night there, which we did, which was five hours driving. Um, and then we're like, oh, we don't want to drive up I-5 to where we're going. So let's go up on the Olympic Peninsula and we'll go up to Port Townsend and take the ferry across. And it's only two hours from Miller Sylvania to Port Townsend, two and a half hours. So woke up early, drove up there, get to Port Townsend, heavy winds, the ferry's canceled. Okay, so well, there's another ferry further south. What is it, Kingston or something? Kingston, yeah. And so we go down to the other ferry, and we get there, and everything goes flawlessly, and we go across, and now it's only another Our two hours yeah. driving to the site where we're going to do our walk. So we think, oh, we'll get up there. So we drive up, and we get to the site we're going to do our walk at like 12.30, quarter to one. And we do this walk, and... Half the trail is flooded, so we can't even walk the whole loop. Here we are, all the waterfowl. So, what were you guys saying? <laughs> walk number one, this current excursion. Uh, sure, and what did you say? Uh, truly one of the best walks in the Northwest. <laughs> and then we're like, well, let's go to the second walk and then we'll eat lunch. And so we go to pull up to the place where the second walk is, and the total, the park is completely closed. We can't get in. So we're now at another location that is, uh, Undisclosed. that is what? Undisclosed. Undisclosed. <laughs> that is, uh, next to, uh, that, that's on the south end of the lake where we we're going to walk before. And we're going to do a little walk up following the river. But first we're going to eat lunch. And, uh, and then. people were getting grumpy. Who? Who, who was getting grumpy? Well, some of them sound a little grumpy. Anyway, that's our story for now. So, and that and the first walk was. <laughs> All right. So tell us the story of what's going on here, Sarah. We got here a little bit late because we had two other walks, both of which kind of didn't work because there was flooding in the area. So we ended up here a little bit late. It's now almost sunset. So we walked straight up a hill for a mile and now we're gonna walk straight back down before the sun goes down. Do you know where we are? I do not. What's the lake name? <laughs> Puget Sound. We're overlooking the Puget Sound. Oh, but the lake we're gonna go to. Oh, we were gonna go to um, Lake Fragrance. Fragrance Lake? Fragrance Lake. Yes, we don't know why it's fragrant. We and we're not going to find out because we're not gonna going to go. <laughs> All right, let's just walk out. As Sarah said, the first two walks this day ended up being busts. But this last one was really beautiful. It was a couple of miles long. And as you can see, the light was lovely. We left here and actually went and had dinner in LaConnor, Washington, where I spent the summer after our senior year in high school working in that summer stock theater company. I hadn't been there since, if I remember correctly. And then we went to Deception Pass State Park where we spent the night, and we'd originally planned to stay somewhere else, 
but Sarah rightly noticed that that was closer to where we were doing our walks. It is morning of the third day of the, these, this little trip for walks, and it's a little after 8, and the weather has turned. Yesterday, it was actually the forecast was 80% chance of rain, and it was sunny the whole time we were over here, which was awesome. But it's definitely raining now, and we're going to go on Rosario Beach, Rosario Head, something like that. Do a little walk here, then we're going to do Deception Pass. And then we got a couple more down south, and then that's actually all seven of the walks that we had planned for this um, this trip. Um, we're kind of going to finish them a day early, so then we got to figure out what we're going to do next. Yeah, Rosario Head was a very short but pretty walk. Uh, Taryn actually didn't get out of bed for it. And then we went back to Deception Pass, which you see here, and did a two-mile walk along the bluffs there and all the way down to the beach. This was my favorite walk of the ones we did on this trip, I think. Um, I love the tides. I love the views here. I'd like to go back. Like the, turn of the, tide, you... the uh, campground where we stayed uh, was okay as well. Um, so that worked out. From there we went to Point Partridge, uh, was the name of the walk. We actually started about a mile down the, the coastline from Point Partridge where we had these amazing views of the Olympic Mountains across the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And we were so lucky. As you notice, it was, I said the weather had turned and it was raining in the morning. It was drizzling on us when we were at uh, Deception Pass. But as we got here, the sun came out and the views were just stunning. So this walk was about a mile along the bluff through the woods. And at one point, Sarah and Taryn got ahead of me because I was taking pictures. And I looked out through a gap in the trees, and there was this eagle just coasting on the thermals right off the bluff there. It was really amazing. I didn't get video of it. And we went to this beach that you see here as a stopping point and then turned around and started heading back. Hey, Karoo. Um, I am walking back along the bluff trail at around Point Partridge. I don't know, we went to Point Partridge. We're heading back now. This is the third walk today. It's only quarter after 11, meaning that we're going to drive down another half an hour from here and do the last walk, um, which I think is only is a short walk. So our plan actually originally was to do a couple walks today and then a couple more tomorrow morning. Yes. But since we're done with all four of them today, I think we're going to end up taking the ferry back if possible over to Port Townsend and then staying at the campground state park outside of Port Townsend. We'll see how it goes. This last walk that I mentioned in that last comment um, is called Wilbert Trail and it's an old growth forest that used to be part of the University of Washington's holdings. Uh, to support the college or the university and then in the 70s it was turned into a park 
and it was beautiful and actually once again it was sunny but then it drizzled on us a little bit but we did in fact after this walk catch the ferry and it was really rolly you can see the light there moving and then you're going to see a portal I was trying to get a shot out of the portal and if you look out you can see you see the ocean here and then all of a sudden you see the sky and you can see the amount of rocking and movement we've got going on here so after we got off the ferry we actually went to Fort Warden State Park where we spent the night and it was really beautiful and I'd love to go back there again we actually had dinner at a little seafood shack in Port Townsend before getting up in the morning and driving to Olympia where we spent the next day. This is the real story of our van trips crew. It's nine o'clock in the morning. It rained all night. We're at Miller Sylvania State Park. And uh, I just uh, dumped the tanks out in the rain. We're gonna meet uh, Drew and Beth at uh, Nisqually for a walk this morning. We had a nice walk yesterday around Olympia. I didn't take very many pictures. I took a little video of some waterfowl on the lake. Do you remember there being trumpeter swans on Capitol Lake when we um, lived here in high school? I don't remember seeing them, but you know, who knows? I, I wouldn't have known. But anyway, they were trumpeter swans. You'll see video of that. Uh, yeah, and we're off to Nisqually where we're going to hang out until Beth and get there. We did make it over to Nisqually and it continued to be drizzly. So this walk was wonderful. I'd done this with Kyle last spring, but Karu and Beth were really interested in this particular walk, so we met them and did it again. So I don't count it as a new walk on my walks in the Northwest list. As you could see, it was raining earlier, and it was supposed to rain all day, and ended up, this was like a five mile walk. Uh, I think we were out here for three hours, and it, it was sunny for most of the whole walk. So when we finished this walk, we went back to the van, and we ate lunch with Beth and Carew, and had hot chocolate, warmed ourselves up a little bit. It was still a little chilly. And then we drove to uh, Battleground State Park, which is just outside Vancouver uh, in s southern Washington. And we spent the night there because the next morning we were going to go into Portland and have brunch with Bryn and Alex. However, before we headed into Portland, the lake at Battleground Lake State Park was lovely and as you can see it was raining again this morning um, and Sarah and I actually got up and walked around the lake before we took a shower and headed into Portland and this was also really really beautiful even though this isn't one of the walks in the northwest from the book um, we had actually the last time we walked this trail around this lake was right before Sarah had her bunion surgery it was the morning that she was having bunion surgery we spent the night in this park before we went into Vancouver for the surgery. And we walked around this lake knowing it was gonna be months before we could have a walk like this again. So it was nice to be back and, and see this beautiful site. So we had a great brunch with uh, Alex and Bryn. Alex made us pancakes, which was awesome. And then we jumped in the van, drove back to Pendleton, got back in time to have dinner with Deb, which was nice. It ended up being a really fun trip, nice and relaxing and the transmission of the van didn't cause much problem for us. That's my story. I'm sticking to it.